Okay, we're recording. Cool. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me know whenever we are ready to start. Uh, well, we're recording, so inshallah you can proceed. Uh, it's because uh, it's about 10 minutes to 9 now. All right. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, Rahman Rahim. Before you start, uh, uh, Brother Zakir, uh, Irshad, you're online too, right? Yeah, he is. He's, okay. Uh, very quickly, uh, anybody uh, looks like Sabah is uh, from MCC. Anyone else from Chicago, City of Chicago, City of Chicago, we are talking. Anyone? Other than Sabah. Mm. Just so that you know, uh, uh, Brother Mitchell, you can update on the uh, uh, inner core uh, meetings that you had with the city of Chicago in uh, today's announcement. There's a minor change uh, from the Illinois state's uh, reopening uh, guidelines uh, for the city of Chicago. So who knows, maybe we may have some more changes coming from the state of Illinois as well. Brother Mitchell, do you want to share that, please? Very quick. All right, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. The uh, city of Chicago has been meeting with uh, faith leaders uh, in Chicago to discuss uh, reopening of houses of worship. Um, the city is, has a deep, uh, you know, has a concern about, uh, you know, the continued spread of COVID, but what they have done, because there's been pressure to open up uh, houses of worship their most recent guidelines now, uh, and they're likely to be, they're gonna be reviewed by a broader faith group tomorrow, but I'm in, anticipating these being approved and issued sometime may, maybe by Friday, are as follows. As far as the size, the size will be limited to 50 people, not 100 like under the state of Illinois. However, in Chicago, if you have separate uh, rooms, uh, preferably with separate entrances, then each of those room meeting rooms can be considered a, a, a another meeting place subject to the 50. So to the extent like the DIC has like uh, downtown Islamic Center has like four different levels where prayer is occurring. So that means they can have up to 50 people uh, in each of those uh, individual uh, meeting rooms. The other thing is that they're gonna require uh, strict adherence to uh, 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 social distancing. You have to wear masks. They're encouraging um, uh, the use of sanitizers and washing hands. But I, uh, that is probably the more significant uh, aspect of this, this new change. Uh, one thing that's different about Chicago as opposed to uh, Illinois is that the Illinois guy, I mean, the city of Chicago guidelines are going to be mandatory, i.e. this is going to be a, a, a order from the city of Chicago that everybody must comply with. Um, and like I said, it, uh, as soon as there, the official language is, uh, is a, uh, approved and issued by the city, inshallah, we'll share that on, uh, in the president's group and the HR group. Uh, Just a quick uh Clarification, when we say 50 in each room, so- 50, five zero. Five zero, right, but five zero, can that limit increase more than 100? If you yes. Have, right, so one major up. thing that uh, uh, Brother Mitchell also pointed out and uh, was, let's say if you have a very big hall, very big hall, let's say gym or whatever, right? So uh, what she said was floor to ceiling, if you make a partition, then within that large hall, let's say you have made two compartments, then you can have 50 and 50. Uh, so uh, if, if there are other uh, locations like uh, the uh, ICNs, the ICWs, uh, um, MCCs, Moss Foundations, where they have uh, different levels, different halls, so each hall can, but this is only for city of Chicago. Same thing may come later. Uh, this uh, we do not know yet, but it could come for the state of Illinois as well. The question has been asked several times, right. so only city of Chicago has clarified. And so, even though that clashes with Illinois, you have, what we must remember is that Illinois, uh, uh, the governor took the position of recommending. He's not saying they're mandatory in large part to 
based on law, uh, lawsuits that have been filed against the state in, in terms of it, him exceeding his uh, authority as uh, the chief executive of the state. But uh, uh, the city of Chicago, uh, I'm not, I'm anticipating that uh, because it's more directly concerned with the public health of, of, the, of the community is going to have probably more leeway and, and can is in a position to make these requirements mandatory. And uh, one thing, uh, like uh, others are asking the question, yes, very true, nothing on the parameters have changed. The mask, the six foot distances, the oh, are, are. and all that. Nothing has changed. So everything remains the same, except just that the may most likely because of the vertical sizes of the buildings, they might be considering that so that more people can be accommodated or whatever. But Brother Mitchell, can you mute everyone, please? Uh, I, I'm not yeah. a co-host, so I cannot. All right, yeah. here, I'm in here. Okay. Um, uh, so basically, uh, we'll turn on to this program. Uh, so uh, thanks to Kashif and ICN board and the team, uh, they have developed this uh, very nice software uh, application. After, uh, I've had the preview at around 6 p.m. We looked at it very nice. So. Uh, uh, it will be very helpful, useful for any masjid to uh, do the contact tracing or register your uh, congregants. So uh, with that, we turn it over to Kashif if you have to say anything, if not to Zarkar. Sure, yeah, just one, Zarkar uh, Lakhir, um, uh, this CIOGC team, Maksud by everyone. Uh, I'm hoping that we have a representation there. A few uh, brothers from uh, IFS and Makkah Center Another have uh, contacted us, so I think this is a good platform to share this. And our IT team, uh, Bazakir Faz, is here to present what uh, the application that they have developed. So with that, I think we can start. And if there's any questions at the end, you can inshallah ask. So please hold your questions. Inshallah, they'll be answered uh, at the end. Inshallah. And Bazakir, you can share your screen with the presentation, right? Or you? Yeah, he's sharing it. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. This is Zakir from ICN. Um, <clears throat> so right now, what you, uh, what we would be this talking about is the application uh, that uh, we have come up to do the, uh, the contact tracing. Uh, people who are coming in for daily salah, the Juma salah, we want to be able to identify uh, every member who comes in. And uh, if there is any breakout of COVID-19, we want to trace back for all the congregants that came in uh, for that particular salah where the breakout happened or were, so that we can trace it back to individuals who were present and then probably inform them and let them know uh, so that they could be uh, quarantined uh, if required. <clears throat> this, is, uh, this was purely uh, developed uh, with, the, with the thought uh, how ICN operates. So, uh, but again, now since we have gone in and uh, invested enough time on it, uh, this this could become a platform for every other masajid, uh, probably to uh, do a lift and shift of this uh, uh, framework uh, for their own uh, usage. Uh, so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dri dive into the various uh, sections of this uh, tool. Uh, or the solution, and then we will go through a quick demo uh, where I would be doing each of these steps and showing how uh, a masjid would be experiencing this uh, uh, this application or using this application. And finally, at the far tail end, you can have questions asked. So please hold on to your questions till I'm done with my demo. So uh, here we go. So as you see out here, this is a three-step process. Uh, the first one is a QR code. A QR code could be presented as a unique identification number for every Musalli who is registered to come to ICN. So every today, uh, ICN masjids are or doors are open for anyone who can show show up and do a namaz before COVID-19 and and go back and and do his day job. But after COVID-19, to do a contact tracing, we needed to identify each and every congregant who was uh, who was coming into masjid. So instead of doing a, a paper trial work wherein you put up a, a, a kind of a paperwork uh, at the registry at the at the entrance of our masjid and ask everyone whoever shows up to write their name, telephone number, 
and uh, the time they came in, something like a check-in process that every other office has. We could have gone with that option, but right now with the digital world, we want to leverage this and we have come up with this whole digital solution to uh, replace this paperwork. So think when you are listening to this, try to uh, resemble this whole process as what you would have done with a paper and a pen. So first thing is you get a QR code. Now, when we talk about QR code, we are collecting three vital information, the name of the congregant, the email address, and the phone number. Because if there is any breakout, we need to reach out to the congregant who was present. So with these three unique uh, details, we are generating a unique QR code for every congregant of ICN. He or she would be uh, have to register and get his or her QR code so that he or she can enter in masjid. Without a QR code, he or she will not be allowed to attend any salat in the masjid. Uh, getting a QR code is less than a minute task, so it is not a very heavy uh, form you will see in, in, in like a few minutes. Uh, so it's pretty simple, eight simple questions to be answered. Uh, and then once you answer them, you get an auto, uh, automated generated email with the QR code in it. Every time you come in, you just show the same QR code. Once you signed up for a QR code, you're not required to re-sign or re-register over a period of time for any number of salats. We can identify you with that one QR code every time you show up at ICN. Second step, once, you, once I have a, a QR code, now if suppose we are right now uh, ready for Isha, which is probably inshallah at 10 o'clock today. Uh, I have my QR code. I, I take my phone, I carry my QR code, maybe on a phone or a piece of a printout of my QR code to Masjid. At the Masjid entrance, with the help of operations team of ICN, they would be scanning this QR code for validating and entering his, or, or making or checking in the, the Musalli. Uh, this is again, only a one step process. On an average, it should not take more than five seconds, every Musalli to pass through this QR code scanning. Uh, along with this uh, QR code scanning, we are, uh, intention is to also do a medical check. But again, that is not part of the solution. The solution is only to trace back. So once the QR code is signed, uh, scanned and validated and it happens instantaneously on the form, a uh, bad QR code, it will not be allowed to get submitted or saved onto the screen or onto, in, into the, to the database. Uh, all this data, that is the generation or the collection of the uh, Musalli's information for the QR code, as well as uh, every check-in for every Musalli at the masjid is currently stored in Google Sheet. So we are tracking everyone who got registered and then that registration, uh, how many times was it used, that QR code used, at what time. So we, we do a kind of an end-to-end -end solution out here with these two steps. Finally, the third one is the reporting site. This is purely for the, uh, the management and the, the board to watch for. Uh, we give them account of uh, total QR codes registered so far. Uh, and since it's a one-time activity, we would be able to know out of our maybe 1,000, 3,000 congregants of our uh, ICN community, how many have got registered so that we know what kind of capacity we may have to go or anticipate at the, uh, at the entrance of Majid for any, any, at any given point in time. Along with that, every time there is a scanning happen for a Salat, like again, I'll take the example of the Isha Salah. I show up at 9.45, Jamaat is at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, I get scanned, automatically the number of attendees for that Salah will get incremented. Now this is helpful for my operations team to track how many people have already got signed in. And once we reach to the decided number of 175, uh, whatever that number is going to be, uh, they would be stopping or, or not allowing more people to be checked in. So that, uh, those, those checks happen and those, that is the reporting side of this, uh, the, the, the solution. So out here, if you see at the bottom of the screen, there are a few URLs. I'm going to be sharing this uh, deck with you all, inshallah, uh, through Kashabai. Uh, but yeah, all these URLs are the active URLs that we are using as part of the solution. As you see, there is a Salat registration for the first step. Then there is a uh, Ogden scanner. Since we have three different masajids, we had to create three different scanners so that we can segregate the data for all the three masjids. And then finally, we have an ICN dashboard, which gives a holistic view of all the three masjids uh, to the board. 
I will jump to the demo. Um, please uh, hold your questions uh, till I complete my demo. All right, so as I said, um, uh, we would be having a registration. So this is the first step of registration. So as I said, there are only eight questions that Asma Sali has to answer. So he gets in, onto this form through the uh, ICN. Right now, we, we are using our, our hosting website. You can use yours. But yeah, end of the day, you would need to reach, you need, uh, you need to have this URL given to your Musali so that they can register themselves for the QR code. You hit the start button, you enter the name. I'll probably register my wife. I'll use my email ID right now uh, so that I can do this because I don't have access to hers. All right, so this is required because we don't want people to misuse this registration form. So that's one step what we are doing out here of making sure that we are getting uh, validating all the uh, QR codes, uh, all the entries. So we got this confirmation code and that's valid. And basically if it was invalid, it would have added out there. Then my phone number, or two, female, please don't say it to my wife uh, that I know her age. All right, so since uh, we have this mas mas uh, three different masjids, I am putting out here one of the masjids that we often go to the Ogden one. And once that gets selected, uh, we know how many people are registered for every masjid. This is not for uh, putting people into a particular bucket, nothing gets uh, rolled off. It's just an information that we as a as as a team uh, need to be prepared. This is another question. If we because it is going to be a recurring event, we are trying to get more volunteers for helping us out. So maybe yes for this answer. And then finally the uh, terms and condition. This is yet to be finalized, but this is where we are right now. And once we say submit, you will get a confirmation, and it it asks us to uh, let us know that we would should have received an email. So let's go back and check the email. Yeah, alhamdulillah. There you go. We got the QR code. So this is the, the first step that I showed in my previous slide. So I have completed my registration for my wife. She, so she has her QR code ready. Now, once she, she is ready with her QR code, if she shows up on the masjid entrance, what happens next? So I'll take an example with an error code, and then we will go through uh, a valid case. So I'll do an error scan. There you go. So, so if you see, there is there's a check out here which we have done that a code does is not accurate. It will not let through. And since we have. Sorry, I'm just getting my QR code. All right, updated QR code that from my phone. So this is how the, the person at the masjid would be getting in. So he or she would be showing their QR code. My wife, Batul, she would be, inshallah, she got her once it gets submitted. Now it will, it should not give me an error, it checked us in. That's pretty much it. So now I have recorded the information about the person who is, or the Musalli who is trying to get into my masjid also recorded that he or she has been, he, he or she has checked in for a Salat. I will just take the last step and then we'll open up for questions. Sorry for this, this is not swapping out. Okay. Assalamu alaikum brother. All right, so as, as I said, we are, so right now the count increased, inshallah, I think so there is someone else also registered, but if you see out here, this shows that Ogden had one entry, one, one check-in happen out here. So that's exactly how our operations team will know that they're reaching their limit, that they should not be allowing more people to come inside the parking lot. Uh, so this is the whole solution uh, for, from, uh, that we have developed for ICN. I will open up for some questions. And uh, also there are a few more things on the slides that we can talk about as the questions come in. So, how, how, how do we implement this stuff? Sorry, uh, whoever is speaking, we cannot hear you. I cannot hear you, or your question is not clear. Yeah, can you hear me now? 
I think this is what you were asking. It's, it's on this slide, Kulim Bhai. Okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll walk you guys through this particular slide too, so that it is easy for everyone. I'm pretty sure this should answer all all the questions. Uh, so how do you get this solution for your own masjids? So basically, what you need uh, on the left hand side is the uh, the setup that you would need. So right now, we the whole solution is based out of Jotform. We're not trying to promote or sell this. This is what we use out here in ICN. Uh, right now, we uh, depending on the number of uh, subscribe. Uh, uh, submissions you would expect for a month you have to pick up a particular uh, paid subscription uh, we anticipate at ICN that we might have close to 10,000 uh, submissions or check-ins totally for a month uh, with the counts that we have so we had to go for a silver level but if you have a smaller one you can go to a bronze uh, bronze one too uh, they have their own subscription subscription uh, cycle, so you, you can take a look at their website and that should give you the details about it. Second thing, for storing the data, right now the forms use Google Sheets. If uh, there are other mechanisms that your messages are, um, are, uh, are using, like a database or something of that kind, are also available through JotForm, but you, we at ICN are using Google Sheets, so all the data that we scan, we ask through the, uh, the, the forms for registration, is all stored and recorded in Google Sheets right now. Uh, finally, the dashboard that you saw was uh, created through Google Charts. Again, that was something out of the box that we used, so nothing fancy. Uh, finally, for QR code scanning, what we have seen is that what I did right now through a web page is always doable, very easy, but there is a better solution once you have a JotForm subscription or without a subscription too, you can download a JotForm app on your phone device and then you can have the form opened uh, through the JotForm app in a kiosk mode, then you, uh, it will automatically take to the, 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 the start page every time the scanning has successfully completed. So that's something that we have seen and have, we have recommended. There's no restriction. You can still use the way how I have done right now through a web page, but uh, the recommendation is to use a kiosk mode in the JotForm. Uh, someone from your IT team should be able to help us help you out. Now, so no, the sec sorry, welcome Islam. Uh, the, the second part or the critical part, which I think so everyone would be interested, how can you use all the things that we have developed at ICN? So there is a way to do this, is basically you can uh, have your JotForm ID created, and once you have your JotForm, you can copy or import all the forms that we have developed. Like you can literally get the form that we develop or we use at ICN in your space. The only thing that you will not get is the the Google links, uh, uh, yeah, that's, those are the only things that you would not be able to do. But everything else, you should be able to get it right from, like, uh, get, give you a good jump start. And uh, obviously, there are some uh, conditions that, uh, that, that I said earlier that if you want to use Google Sheet or not, that is up to you. Uh, as part of this particular deck, I've also mentioned so that it is easy for you to do a cloning of those forms. These are the two forms that we use, one for Salat and one for check-in. Um, uh, this is the, your, your IT team can come in, uh, clone them from here, that is import them uh, using the steps given in my previous, that is step two out here. Uh, you can just clone from the existing forms. After that, as I said, we have these data sitting with us uh, in the raw form. So this is how our Google Sheets look right now. So the top one is the actual sheet where we are getting the QR codes and all of the details. And the below one is the check-in data that is the time that check-in happened, the, the QR code that was scanned. So those are the two things that we are critical for contact tracing. Other than that, um, I ha we have our ID, email ID uh, for any help that you guys need. Can I, uh, can I make a, ask a question and make a suggestion? This is Dr. Kamal Dirawi. Yes, sir. Jazakallah khair for this great effort. Uh, just I have a suggestion and instead of asking about the exact age, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, you know, we need the exact age. Do you need the exact age or can you create categories? Uh, that's uh, a jot form, that's a jot form, uh, 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 I would say, setup. Uh, right now we want, we went with an exact age. You, any, anyone can do a, a range. It could be anything. It's, it's a text field end of the day. Okay. The other question, as far as data security and all of that, uh, mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, do you have any any uh, security measures to make sure nobody can get all of these names and, and contact information? Yeah. So for that reason itself, what we would recommend is to make sure that. Uh, so right now, if you have a a, a Jotform subscription, uh, they have a good uh, security mechanism. We have been at ICN have been using Jotform for years now, so we haven't had any data breaches so far. Now, if, once you have completed the 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 entry in the Jotform, if you download it to a spreadsheet and you are you are putting it into a a common drive which has access to everyone in the world, then that would be a risk. Uh, what we at at least at ICN, what we have done is we have our ICN uh, Google Drive, and that has a restrictions on the people who have access to it. So that's that's the security measures that we have taken, and we have tried to limit the data that we want to connect collect from people. Uh, so that's why we are just collecting names, address, email IDs, and their phone numbers, so that we can reach out to them when we have to. Otherwise, that this data just sits out there without with no one knowing. Uh, if, the location if, of the data. If CIOGC were to uh, centralize this process and, and basically have on uh, the CIOGC website mm -hmm. some link where people can do the registration process with you, and then and then we can somehow uh, share uh, with the different messages, do you think that's a possibility? Um, so right now, whatever solution you have seen is with very minimal coding, like literally zero coding in it. Other than that, QR code showing up on your email, that one line of code. I have not written a single line of code. Everything is out of the box. Now, the moment we go anything making more centralized and make the JOT forms read from a different data source, uh, some thought has to be given. Yes, doable, definitely doable. There is no big deal out of it. But yes, um, I would say it is going to take an effort uh, for doing that, that step. At least and, from what, and, I, what I know. Yeah, brother, I, I might be very new to this. so. Yeah, Brother Kamal, this is we already discussed with another web developer in the software. So there's an enhancement tool is available. And in fact, we have also done a demo. Uh, so if you are traveling and you are close to Mass Foundation, and if you want to register, then that app be capable of it. So there are a lot of functionality that we can include um, in this. But at this time, we want to make sure that we have basic necessity that is more important for, for all the Masajid to start with, which is Salah registration, and then also uh, give the, the contact traceability. So the, we're keeping to that limit, and, uh, and uh, so the, this is kind of developed in, in a way, but uh, there are a lot of other areas that we can explore, and inshallah, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can add uh, to this functionality. One one oh, final think. one final question is how to how to deal with the segment of the community that really do not really use the technology they they're not into uh, this I I, I I think I believe there is still a segment in every community that this is kind of you know might be challenging for them as we, yeah we thought about that and I think one of the idea that's there that we will do our best to communicate this. And I think COGC recommended also Chef Azwan uh, will be creating videos to at least, uh, you know, uh, get this word out that this, uh, you know, we are starting the services there and registration is important. And then on site, the uh, volunteers would help those who are non-tech savvy. So we will definitely make sure that they get help. And somebody asked the uh, question yeah. about elderly. I think we are following the COGC and CDC recommendation to only allow the attendees and musallis ages 16 to 65. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Zakir, there are some questions on the chat. Uh, uh, here's one that says, uh, can Mohid kiosk be used to scan the QR code? Yes, Assalamualaikum. This is Faisal. I'm from ICW calling in. Uh, Brother Al asked me, but I'm also the founder and the owner of the Mohid system. So just, to, just so you all know that we already rolled out a process for contact tracing as well. So any masjid who are using Mohead can also use that uh, free of cost. Uh, there's no additional, we are using program registration and we made some enhancement for contact tracing as well, uh, which also include when people register, we'll get the QR code. Uh, when the people come, uh, the volunteers should be able to scan that code as well. Uh, people who are not registered, they can also do that through the kiosk as well. So we're going to have the webinar tomorrow 
as well for every masjid that we are doing, whoever is, uh, if someone, if some masjid has not received an email, uh, I'll make sure that every everyone would receive that. Uh, and if uh, if you guys are interested, you can join that webinar as well. Can I can I can I uh, uh, can I ask a question about that? Since the brother is on the phone, what assurances do we give to people who register that their data will only be used for contact tracing and not for creating a database that will be used for a lot of other reasons? So most uh, most of the uh, most of the donors and most of the community members, uh, Mohit already have their contact information when they are making donation. So, but that, that's, um, that's a different story. You, t you right. get it from the Masajid. I don't know how legal that is, but now when people are giving you their information to facilitate contact tracing, are we, I really so hate, there is I, a, I don't want to. There, there, yeah, uh, there is an agreement that they have to sign up when they sign up for the form, when they receive it. Uh, so they actually, uh, uh, Masajid can add their, uh, add, add whatever they want in the language that, uh, it's just like ICW is going to have their own language that uh, that would protect you for that. Uh, the, for, for for as far as the the database goes, uh, we have it on AWS. Uh, all the security measures are already there, so we do the transactions. Is is the default the is the default is the default basically people's data will be used for any purposes uh, at their institution uh, sees appropriate. Yeah, absolutely. It is appropriate as long no, the, as they, no, 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 no. My question to you that yeah. when people sign up, when people sign mm -hmm. up for this system, is the default that uh, do people have to actively opt out from anything else other than contact tracing, or or the other way around? Uh, no, I guess I'm not. Bro I'm brother, not brother, brother Kamal, these are the two different questions, brother Kamal. The, are you talking about the Mohit system, or are you talking about I'm, the one, brother Zakir? I'm presenting. talking about the Moha system because now the brother uh, presented it as an alternative and I really do, do not want people to provide their data thinking this is to facilitate contact tracing and, and the default basically is contact tracing and every other thing and then they become a part of a database for, uh, for other things. That, that is not ethically acceptable and I hope we will not get the, go that route. So Obviously, Masajid owns the data, and uh, when the contact tracing, uh, when the you you do it in any any other way, right? For from this brother who has actually presented a very good uh, uh, solution here, you can do that. You can use Mohit or any other system. Uh, you Masajid owns the data, and they won't be able to use that for any other any other ways unless uh, you know Masajid wants to add that that uh, language into that that they, they or acknowledgement for the community members to sign up and they can receive a newsletter from the masjid so that's that's another thing but uh, un, other than that i don't think so any other reason that that masajid would use the data for so brother faithal i think what brother uh, kamal is asking can this data which we collect for traceability purpose be for traceability purpose only and have it restricted for any other use I think that probably. Yeah. That's what I'm what, I think brother, brother already Masjid, answered. Masjid owns it. Masjid yeah. owns the data, and Masjid, Masjid can use this for any, uh, for for the purpose. If they if they want to use for any other purpose, they have to identify that in the acknowledgement section that that uh, the the community member or whoever is registering uh, should agree with that, right? Other than that, uh, if this is only for the contract yeah. tracing, and, and that's exactly the question was asking. What is the default? Uh, so again, can I, can I is the default? Let just me just uh, finish here. Is the default not to use it, or the default to use it unless they ask not to use it? Default is not to use it. I just want to make sure you understand my question, and then so you can address it properly. Brother Abraham, can I interrupt? Let's focus on first. Let's, let's focus on Zakir uh, because he has presented a solution here. Let's discuss that. And Faisal, thank you for joining. And if there is a more question, how do we integrate with the Mohit, we can set up another call because we don't want this to be a confusing message uh, for people who are here. So Kashif and Zakir, please go ahead and continue with your presentation and answer the question. And then we can address uh, the Mohit interaction uh, uh, integration uh, later. But Zakar, brother Urshad, the question, the yeah, question no. that was raised, may I? 
No, I, I, can, I, I can answer the question, brother, just one second. No, no, just before you do that, let me clarify one thing. The same question that apply from Wahed apply for uh, JAT form. So can the data that ICN collect be restricted only for traceability purposes, or it can be used for any purposes the manager want to use? It's same, same, same concept. So I, I just I hope you address it in that form. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to answer that? No, uh, that's fine. No, no, I'm okay. All right. Uh, right now, this, the intention is just to do a contact tracing, just to simplify the question's answer. So there is no other intent, there is no other newsletter or anything getting created out of it. Uh, and this is this is just to make sure that all the Musallis who come in, uh, they are they we have some sort of a, a a trace of them so that and the intention is not to use this data unless and until there is a breakout and we have to reach out to the Musallis. No one else right now, other than a couple of IT folks, have access to this data. Uh, no other team either has access to this data right now. This is fully secured, and uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, so far, that's, that's the whole intent. Thank you for think, clarification. And Brother uh, Faisal from uh, Mohit uh, answered exactly the same, uh, that this is owned by the Masajid, and this is the intent, and this should be reviewed by the legal teams of each Masajid. And that is the intent is contact tracing. So each message should have this reviewed. By I, their I really, I really think intent alone does not do it. Is there an assurance to people when they sign up? Your data is only to facilitate contact tracing, period. And if we need to use it for something else, we'll come back to you. There has to be some statement so people. Yeah. So that statement needs. That's what I'm saying. I think that statement needs to be added in your terms and condition, and have it reviewed by your attorney to make sure that there's no liability on this, what the questions are asked. So these are all valid questions. And that is a process that ICN is following. Thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, I, have a, I have a quick question. This is Sarwar Nasser speaking. I just joined, sorry, I was late. I didn't know about that. Um, so it's my question is that the health departments are doing this uh, contact, um, um, information uh, how are you coordinating with health departments mm. anyone no do you want to shed some light brother nasser yes i'm saying is health departments are doing this and they are hiring people also the local health departments and they are coordinating with the department of public health State Department of Public Health, which you are talking about as I joined later, how are you coordinating with those health departments? Or is it you are just doing your masks separately? This is particularly for any individual mosque. The case in point here is just ICN developed it for any Musalli that comes into for regular prayers or Friday, they want to have that record just in case if anybody that gets positive, they can be informed. So that's the whole reason for this. And uh, there is a separate protocol in case if they get uh, identified who to report to, how to report to. So if I come, come to the masjid, I will automatically be traced, right? Correct. If you are in the system, you are traced. So if, if, ICN, if MCC adopts this and they are scanning, you register it, then you will be in the system that you prayed Juma on uh, June 8th or whatever date that you will be recorded there. Okay, so I will not have any option that I can pray, but I should not be counted or anything like that. If that's all up to MCC. Uh, ICN's uh, stand is if you register, you register, you get in. You don't register, you don't get in. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right. And uh, Alhamdulillah, just uh, some questions were being asked. ICN has more than 3,000 database, so they are not concerned about the database at all. This is purely an excellent uh, uh, step that was taken by uh, the whole team and uh, led by uh, Kashif there. So there's another question here. QR code has to be scanned at the exit as well. Is that uh, required, uh, Zakir? No. Uh, so the, right now, the process is just to do a check-in, no checkout. So we are assuming uh, the, the operation teams is going to be instructing and we are, that's the communication that we are doing. Right. If, if you guys can go on mute, there's a lot of, all right. Yeah, if, if you heard me, yeah, it's, uh, it's just a check-in process. There's no checkout. 
the instructions to all the musallis are uh, are getting uh, informed how how to uh, walk through the masjid so that we don't have to do the tw the two scans okay somebody was asking a question i have a question uh, this data was just check in process uh, anybody who has, who is not checking but they can still come to the masjid right that is no, your call brother oh, yeah sorry You're right. up to you who you and uh, take in who you don't take yeah that's like that i mean if if somebody doesn't check but can he come to the masjid or not no, that's up to you every that's masjid up. will okay. have different if you do not want okay. to trace that person you mm -hmm. can allow anybody to come in okay 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 uh i think that is about the questions i do not see any other one thing i would uh, i would add to uh those actually what the solution that you have uh, when the people will scan it i would suggest that to add the temperature section as well so when the people when your volunteer take the temperature they can add the temperature as well so this is also required and recommended by the health uh, department as well when you do the contact tracing so I, I again have a question because I joined late. This is not a CIOGC program. This is ICN program, right? That's right. Correct. Okay. Just want to be sure. But there are lots of masajid who do not have this program. They want to adopt it. So that's the facilitation that is taking place. I don't know who are those. The, uh, there's another question here, Zakir. What if someone forgets to bring the QR code? Um, so, um, and the only trouble is, uh, like we go to work, I can I don't carry my access card. That day, probably my uh, guard who is new, he will not allow me. So yeah, same thing out here. Sorry. We are not allowing anyone without QR code to to make it very simple. Right now, ICN has made that step that if you're not carrying your QR code with you, uh, we will not be allowing you to enter or do the salat. Right. So on site, we'll have the you know. Uh, the option to you know they can register it takes 30 seconds but qr yeah. code is required yeah okay i think if all the have a quick question about the qr code yes sir um is this something that is a uh, that can be generated one time and printed and the masali can present it or is does this some is this something that changes no this is one time static code we are not okay. making any dynamic code right now I'm just trying to think on top of the question that was just recently asked. That yes, you know, I guess you could print one out and keep it in your car just to be yes, safe. Yes, yes, yes. You, 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 that's that's the that was the whole intent that you don't have to uh, carry your phone. You can have it printed out and then carry it with you. Okay, perfect. The Dahari have a couple of questions. Let me scroll up. Can see. The main host data with individual masajid the sub host, and there is another one. Masajid can have their sub accounts and their own dashboards. Can we have one single application and the central registration QR code generation system so that anyone can pray anywhere without regard generating multiple QR codes? Zip code may also be added to identify the area of residence that masajid. Well, I don't know if uh, Zakir may be able to answer that. So, sorry, what was the question? Oh, once again, sorry. Uh, the question here is, can we have one single application and a central registration slash QR code generation system so that anyone can pray anywhere without generating multiple QR codes? Zip code may also be added to identify the area of residence that of that oh. person. Yeah, I think so. That goes back to the original question. I think so was uh, asked uh, way back earlier that can this be hosted by CIOGC and then uh, we all register out there and then we can use it. Um, right now, I the the application has not been given a thought to that extent. But is it doable? I would say yes. It should. It is doable. Uh, uh, it it could be taking some time to come uh, come up with that solution. But right now, the, at the current state, the solution just support ICN masjid or one individual masjid, I would say, or, or an institution. Because right now, ICN has like three masjids, so we support all the three masjids with the same QR code. Correct. And there's another question. Is there a cost for masjid to clone your QR code? Or maybe they're asking for the application, I believe. 
I'll have Kashif Bhajan oh, answer no, it, but yeah. Alhamdulillah, uh, just give us dua. Brother Zakir has already shared the information, how to clone, yeah. how to share it. So if, it's, if it helps, if someone wants to use it, you can. This was the only intent. We were asked by the CFGC leadership team to present this. Uh, so if it helps any other masjid and they want to use it, Brother Zakir has shared the information and that's the intent. And I guess... Uh, the meeting time is also uh, past three minutes, right? So, if there are no more questions, we can end. Uh... Certainly, uh, Brother Ishad. No, thank you, uh, uh, ICN uh, team, uh, uh, the Kashif and Zakir, for your um, uh, willingness uh, to share this uh, development that you guys have. Um, CIGC role is to uh, to collaborate and and unify. Um, and that is exactly what this uh, step is. So, you know, um, just, just wanted to share with everyone that CIGC also had, um, uh, has been working with another uh, software developer who had a similar uh, code, but our focus was more on the central database. And uh, um, so not specific to one massage, but that also could be tailored to the uh, specific massage. So that's something that we have said, and that's the reason why I answered the question earlier when somebody asked, can this be a centrally um, located uh, and, and uh, have that capability? So if I'm in a neighborhood area and I'm at uh, one of those uh, location of ICN, can I go to this location or that location? So that can uh, capabilities uh, were available with that software. So again, that, uh, that uh, the technology is, is available. The platform is there. We just need more time to develop it and fine tune it if needed. But inshallah, that is uh, our plan. Um, whether it's uh, Zakir and Kashif's uh, idea that we can enhance and elaborate if, if that's needed. But at this point, I think, uh, you know, we just uh, wanted to keep it very simple to each massage. I know a lot of you have requested it. I know Sheikh uh, Kalim is on from uh, Islamic Foundation and other massage have shown interest. Um, so our, our focus was just to kind of share what we have, um, um, you know, available, um, you know, with ICN willing to help and support. So I want to thank ICN and the rest of their team uh, for willingness to help and support. At, at and then again, if somebody else has a, another idea, solution, please do share so everyone can benefit. Or maybe we can improve our offering. So that's just the intent. And Zakal Khair for CIGC to uh, really organizing these. So each of the massages can benefit. Yeah, uh, from Masjid Huda, uh, Brother Kashif, Jazakallah khair. Uh, really, we saw your demo and mashallah, it was really helpful. Jazakallah khair. This is Abdul Manan from Masjid Huda. Thank you very much. So, uh, so in, in the closing, I just wanted to share that if there, uh, if there's an interest and if you want to uh, uh, have more information, we can facilitate or get some contact information out um, and, and have uh, more one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, sessions as well if anybody's needed or have uh, uh, interest in it. Um, and, and likewise, I mean, the, you know, as those guidelines were put out, uh, mashallah, most of the masajid are using CIGC reopening guidelines and, uh, and, and, and information is being shared. Uh, one of the areas, uh, uh, two areas that I wanted to highlight again today as a reminder that uh, these are the posters, flyers, and the social distancing labeling, um, which was embedded in our reopening guidelines. Um, if you need, uh, some of the Basajit uh, are requesting us, can you print this out, give us uh, a copy of it. We are more than happy to help and support any Masajid if they need any of that. Um, so we are willing to help and support in any way we can. Um, so let us know if there's a need for those flyers and posters and, and, and any material that you see in our reopening guidelines uh, that you need a copy of it. Uh, we are in a process of printing some and that we will have those available for distribution if you guys need it for your lobby. Um, uh, for signage is important, communication is important. That's number one. Number two, we also have the PPE resources as well as we shared earlier. So if you need a face mask, if you need some cleaning products, if you need other supplies that, that, uh, that you don't have already, uh, please let us know. We do have uh, information that we can uh, uh, already put that in our re reopening guidelines, but more information is needed. Inshallah, we will be more than happy to help and support. Our, our role is to, to, to make sure that you are equipped and you're ready 
uh, to reopen uh, when you are planning to reopen, and that's that's our effort. Inshallah, we're trying to make. So, so this is Iman from uh, from Huda. I, I wanted to ask you that if um, how we can get some uh, mask because we do need some mask. We order some mask. They are being delayed right now because we don't want anybody to come in the masjid without the mask. So yeah. So Imran. Imran, I have already spoken with Brother Rafiq Ullah. I mean, if you want, I can take it offline and, and send you that information as well, Imran. Yes, please. Thank you, Jirakullah. Okay, we'll do that. Um, also, Shadbhai, I think this was, I had asked for that information on the group, but uh, didn't get a response for where we can get some of the supplies. Sure, uh, but Wajahat, I thought I, I texted you on the WhatsApp on your private, uh, but uh, we will definitely post Thank again on, on the president Thank chat and make sure Thank that you. information is available for everyone. Thank you. Great. Uh, so, uh, Kashif, there is a uh, there are questions in the chat. How can uh, the masajids get this application? There are several, several masajids that are interested. I think, as uh, um, Zakir has said, we'll share this presentation, which has the instructions and also the um, uh, the email address is there, so you can reach out to whether Zakir or the IT team if you have any specific questions. But I think he has provided the instructions how to clone the data and use this application. Plus, uh, uh, with your permission, we'll be posting this uh, so that if anybody has any question, they can reach out to you. Yeah, I think the email address is also shared. Yeah, okay. so uh, in my presentation, there is an email address at the last slide. Uh, slide number six, which you see in your uh, right now, has the instructions how to, to do it. Yeah, so if you see my screen. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, this is a solution. Like, how do you sh how to uh, how to clone the solution? And uh, it has also the steps out here. Uh, it's a I simple step. I can't see anything. I'm not sure. Uh, not I'm sure. We'll be posting this uh, on the website. Yeah, we, yeah we'll, uh, we'll post we'll, it out. Yeah, we'll post it on the website and also on the WhatsApp group. Also, we can post it. Uh, yeah. And brother Rishad, I need so many things for all this. Like okay, I please, please reach out to us. We are we are here to help anyone uh, if there's a need. So we'll do that. Um, okay. With that, yeah, please, brother. Um, so if there's no further question, if there if there's no further question, then I can ask uh, our Sheikh Hisham uh, to make a dua. Inshallah, we will conclude the meeting. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Assalamu alaikum. Inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all these efforts and as we continue to work together, may Allah accept this from us. And just a moment to raise our hands and bow our heads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma anta salam, alaykum salam. Tabarak ta rabbin wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Oh Allah, oh Allah, with your patience upon the love of Prophet Muhammad. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. Guide us to that path which will lead us towards you, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, guide us as community leaders, Ya Allah, and allow us to make the right decisions for our communities. Ya Allah, allow us to, oh Allah, grant us cure, a cure for which there is no sickness afterwards, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow our masajid to flourish and allow them to be beacons of light on this earth so that we may worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, allow our community to stay safe. Allow us as administrations to continue to provide the services for our community to keep them safe, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, protect our families and every sacrifice that is made by our families so that we can be in conversations like this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the CIOGC leadership and all of the Masajid leadership that are putting together their thoughts and working together, really trying to make sense and act upon the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for us to work together and be as one. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khair. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasithoon. Wa salamun ala mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amen. Jazakumullahu khair. Jazakumullahu khair.